All right, let's take a look at our cam radial piston motor. So this one here has the pistons arranged in a radial arrangement. What that means is that the pistons are in line with the radius of the circle. So they are mounted in the rotor and we can actually see one of the pistons right here. What they get oil in the back side of them and they're going to get pushed out and so then the roller on the piston is going to come in contact with the cam. Okay, so we're seeing the cam, the rotor, the piston, and a roller. So we have a cam, radial, piston, motor. Now this is a motor. It has three ports on it. And those three ports that we have are going to be the A and the B workflow. So we're going to have oil come in A, goes clockwise. Oil comes in B, goes counterclockwise. And this third port in the center is going to be our K-strain port. And so that's going to be where all of our motor, internal motor leakage is able to go. Now, if we take a look in using this cutaway, which is super handy, we just lift this rotor right out. And obviously, we're not going to be able to do this in industry as easily, but these cutaways make it really helpful. We can see that this piston is able to go in and out of the rotor. Now, this oil is getting in the back side of the piston to cause that piston to go out. And on the end of the piston is a roller, and that roller is actually making contact with the cam. And as it makes contact and slides down the ramp of the cam, the entire rotor is able to move. Now there's not just one piston in this rotor, but there's actually multiple pistons in this rotor. Now those multiple pistons in the rotor all have a port on the rotor where they're going to get their oil flow. So these are the ports that are sending the oil into the back side of the piston to push the piston out against the rotor. The oil that comes into these ports comes from a manifold that sits in the center of the housing. So this manifold as well has ports that are connected and will be able to direct the oil into the ones in the rotor. Now there's more ports in the manifold than there are in the rotor for the reason that we're able to have one of each one of these ports, so it's going to go A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B. And that's going to ensure that we're able to send oil into the rotor on the back side of those pistons to cause it to go clockwise and then send the oil in B to make it go counterclockwise. Now where the oil for these ports comes from is actually from, and let's take a look at the cutaway here, we can see that the manifold itself right here has lands or grooves, one here, one here, and that oil flow coming into this groove is actually feeding directly off of this port. So this port feeds into this groove and this port here would feed into this groove. Okay, And so now this hole right here we can actually see directly goes to this hole in the manifold. So that's how we're able to direct oil from the A and B port into their specific spot in their manifold and the manifold then simply directs that oil as it lines up to a hole in the rotor. That rotor port directs the oil to the back side of the piston causing it to go down. And so now what we'll see is that we'll have half of our pistons will be getting oil to go out and cause the rotor to turn and the other half of our pistons will actually be on the retract mode of this cam and that's going to be sending the oil to the drain port or to the low pressure of the A or B. So the way this motor achieves its volumetric efficiency is using a high pressure seal on this piston right here. So that follows along with the piston as it goes in and out with hydraulic oil coming behind it under pressure. Now this one moves quite easily uh, because it's been sanded down to fit easier in the bore but otherwise it would be normal for this to be fairly snug and you can see it pops out. Now I won't be able to put it back in unless I compress that ring, give it a wiggle and I should be able to get that to pop back into place just like that. So that ceiling ring actually expands creating a volume seal there. The other place we see volumetric efficiency increase on this motor is between the manifold here and the rotor surface here. Both of these are machine surfaces so they're going to fit together with very uh, 
little leakage, but because of that, we have to be careful of how much we contact it, touch it, rub it, scrape it, scratch it, especially in our workbench or if we're rebuilding it. And the way this ceiling surface stays in contact is by the spring pressure that sits on the bottom side of the manifold. So if I flip this over, we can knock the manifold out just like that. And what we'll see on the bottom side of the manifold is actually a set of coil springs that are going to push this manifold away from this rear housing on the bottom here. And so that maintains the contact between this manifold ceiling surface and the rotor ceiling surface all the time. So that's how we're able to get the hydraulic oil in and through and keep it sealed. Now, for overall efficiency in this motor, we see that with this roller being mounted on the end of the piston, we reduce the frictional losses that would come from sliding a fixed piston against a fixed cam ring and instead it's going to be able to roll and the lubrication that is inside of the motor from K-strain leakage is going to be what's lubricating this piston roller. So we see that there's a bushing on the end of the piston, this roller fits right in there, and then the lubrication is going to come from the case strain oil. And so then we see how the oil flow moves from the A port or the B port through the manifold into the rotor, into the piston, pushing the piston against the cam ring, creating the motion, and then converting, which is what the motor does, converts hydraulic energy into mechanical energy.